really important folk scale called the pentatonic scale and we're going to play it out of the key of G. So I'll just uh, start out by playing an example and this is how it sounds. <laughs> That's the straight pentatonic scale, and um, for getting more into the bluegrassy realm and a uh, little bit more of the fun stuff with folk music, a lot of the time what we'll be listening to is the uh, blues pentatonic scale, which has a flat third and a flat seventh as well. So I will now demonstrate that for you. There are a lot of different elements and components in a good jam, but here are three ways that you can approach jamming that will help to create a better dialogue in whichever setting you're sitting in. One, learn the folk scales. In this case, we're talking about the pentatonic scale with added blue notes. It's a pretty common pitfall that when you get hooked on the major scales or minor scales, you just kind of end up playing those over and over. And the idea with the pentatonic scale is we can get a little bit more bluesy with it, jam it up, make it interesting, and it touches in with some really important country roots. So if you're jamming in a bluegrass style or any kind of folk setting, so one of the important folk scales is the pentatonic scale, which is the five note ancestor of the major scale. As you can see when we remove the four and the seven from a major scale, it sounds more folky and jammy, and that's what we're going for. So the second thing is that we run into a problem with the pentatonic scale. It eventually gets boring, so we have to spice it up a little. We do this by adding in some notes. Not the four and the seven we already took out, instead we add in two notes known as the blues notes, which are the flat three and the flat seven. What we now have is a true hybrid, the folk or bluegrass scale, if you will. That sounds a lot better when you're learning to improvise in jam sessions. So what are we trying to do? We're learning how to jam, learning to noodle. This is our very unhigh tech term for the ability to keep a stream of notes coming out of your fiddle as in noodling around. So the, the best way to get your noodle on is to jam along with something like a friend, any of the jam along backing tracks. It makes it a lot more fun to play with a backing track or with somebody, in the most ideal sense, play with somebody live. And you'll have a lot more fun that way and you can create lots of new ideas. Now we're going to work on some tools for musicizing the scale by which we mean creating more of a dynamic flow with the music. So the four elements that we're going to use are adding rests in the music to give it a little bit of pop and long and short bows. And we're also going to work on repeating notes or riffs, coming back to an idea, and um, skipping strings. So next step that's really key is paying attention to the rests. And one of the things that can happen when you get really involved with playing scales and getting better at the bluegrass pentatonic sound 
It's the tendency to overplay, which is understandable. You finally got past the screechy stage and the notes sound less painful, so of course you want to make a lot of them. But what happens is the improvisations will sound too crowded or too noty. The trick is to realize that music is a language and when you're improvising, you're speaking with your instrument. So it stands to reason that you would want to pause for a breath now and then, right? Well, when we add purposeful pauses into our music, these are called rests. As you can see from the diagram, the rests break up the flow of notes and create musical sentences, which sound a lot more like music than just running your scales and you can get a few nanoseconds to figure out what your next note is going to be so you can think it over. So right now I'm going to demonstrate how to jam while using rests. One, two, three, four. So um, for this last bit, we're going to actually put all of these things into practice and you guys can listen to some of my ideas and hopefully get some ideas of your own to work with. Um, to improvise over a basic chord structure, we're going to practice using the pauses and um, the long and the short bows and repeated riffs and also um, skipping over strings. So keep your ears peeled for all that. One, two, three, four. you've heard me play all these examples and had some time to learn what your tools are for improvising, what can you do next? Well, it's pretty simple. Keep on noodling. Play around. The more flight time you can get jamming along to the backing tracks or your unfortunate guitar strumming roommate, the better. The key is that you keep going, even if you think you've made a mistake. In other words, when you're jamming along, don't stop when you mess up. Keep going. Keep going until your solo's over. In fact, if you immediately repeat your mistake, everyone will think you meant to do that and later they'll just call it jazz. Also, always listen while you play. This sounds like a no-brainer, but in the frantic scramble of trying to be in the flow and see what notes are coming, it's easy to forget to listen. Listening is half the conversation. If you can listen to how the chords are changing and to what notes sound better or worse over each chord, It'll really help your playing. And if you get confused, just put in some rests and buy yourself some time to think. Finally, the most important thing is to keep a playful attitude. Don't get too serious. The more you can laugh at yourself and the funny sounds you're making, the more you'll enjoy the process and the better you'll get. Trust us, it's the folk way. See you on Jam Along. Two, three, four.